All righty. Okay, we'll just let's get down from here. Uh, all right. Shut up. Okay. So for today, I did something a bit different this time. I ended up using a maxi dress. It's like a... My dog is right there again. <laughs> she follows me around like a Pokemon. So if you hear like, yeah, you know, it's my doggy. Oh, also she has an Instagram. So if you want to follow that, go right on ahead. A little selfless, selfish, I don't know, plug. So anyways, I decided to do a maxi dress this time. And then when I tried it on, it was okay looking. Like I knew that if I were to cut it up then I would have um, worn it some more. So I decided to cut it up. That's how this video became barfed. <laughs> so for this maxi dress, I created like a bunch of looks with it. There was like so much leftover fabric. So I was super psyched about that. So I created two tops a belt, a bra strap, and a skirt with it. If you wanna see how it's done, you know, stick around, please. Okay, so basically the, the easiest one was definitely the top. As you can tell, the top part of the maxi dress was ruched. I don't know how to pronounce it well, so don't come for me. If you do, then um, <laughs> keep it in there because I'm kind of sensitive. But it's a ruched top, you know what I mean. I'll, I'll put the spelling right here. So first look is the easiest look. I grabbed the maxi dress and made a small hole where I wanted to start cutting. Then I began to slowly cut along the bottom of the ruched portion of the dress. After that, I finished cutting and I got my top. This left me with a lot of fabric to work with, the, the bottom portion. So um, I decided to make a skirt. I mean, I love skirts, so why not just make one? Plus it has slits, so I decided to work with that as well. So just makes sense. I first started off measuring how long I wanted the skirt to be. So I grabbed a skirt that I like the length and width of and this came out to be 15 inches. Also, if you like this pink skirt, I made it myself and I got a video for you showing how I made it and I'll just link that down below. Anyways, I transferred the measurements into the skirt using a marker and ruler. Also, whenever you want to mark any piece of fabric, make sure your fabric is inside out first so the marks won't show when you flip it over. So I ended up measuring from the slit up. So starting from the slit, I go up about 12 inches and from the slit down, I go down about five and a half inches. The reason I added more room is for seam allowance. I marked down five and a half inches down from both sides of the slit. Then I began creating marks across the top and bottom of the skirt, trying to be as straight as possible. Once that is all done, we start cutting across the dotted line. And boom, this is the result. We're not done yet though, we need to measure the waist. For me, it came out to be about 13 inches. So we mark that measurement in the center of the skirt. Then we measure the bottom of the skirt, which came to be about 15 inches, and we marked that measurement at the bottom of the skirt. Once you've made your marks, you slowly drag the ruler up the skirt, slowly decreasing its measurements to create a slight curve to the waist. So the upper part of the waist will have four inches be cut off. The midsection would have about three inches cut off. And the bottom of the skirt will have about two and a half inches cut off. And this is what I mean about the slight curve along the sides of the skirt. Now we sew along the lines and cut off any excess fabric. Once finished, it should look like this. Also, I created a slit on top of the skirt and sewed the seams there so I'm able to get into the skirt and tie the two flaps to make the waist portion of the skirt as tight or as loose as I want it. I decided I only wanted one slit so I just sewed it together and then sewed the bottom seams which resulted in the skirt coming out like this. I'm really happy with how this skirt came out and my seaming is finally improving. Now onto the tube top. So all I did was seam the top of the tube top and left it as is. The reason for this is because it now gave me versatility with the top and I could create different looks with it. You'll know what I mean in a bit. At this point, I'm running out of fabric, but thankfully I had just enough to make a belt. I grabbed two scraps of fabric and ended up sewing the ends together to make one continuous line of fabric. Then I folded the top and bottom of the fabric together. Once you're done sewing the sides together, it should look a little something like this. Now it's a lot neater and the fraying no longer shows. Also, don't forget to sew the ends as well so it can look more put together. 
Last but not least, the bra straps. This is pretty straightforward. I got the last piece of fabric I had and cut it into strips like this. Each strip measured to be about two to two and a half inches in width, and I didn't show this, but it was about 14 inches in length. So you basically grab a strip and start folding it inward, making sure the outer part of the fabric is only showing. Sorry for the struggle. I was trying so hard to do it with one hand, but hopefully you see my vision of what I meant. Once whirled, we begin sewing on the edge of the fabric, and boom, this is the finished result. Well, almost. The straps are neatly sewn, but we still need to add hooks onto them. That's where old bra straps come through, or any kind of hook, really. Well, maybe not his, but this part is super simple. All we do is cut off the ends of the bra straps, cutting off all four hooks, then sewing each of these hooks with the bit of the straps still attached to all four of the fabric straps. Once that's all done, it should look a little like this. Now we are done with all of our pieces, and this is the final products. can mix and match and create a million looks with these pieces. This is the first look though with our tube top and straps. With the straps, all you do is hook it on, then tie it however you like at the top and it makes your shirt that much more girlier. I don't know, I love it. It gives that tube top a little something extra. But if the straps aren't for you, then you can always remove them by unhooking it from your bra and now you got a strapless crop top. The way I tied it was I grabbed a strip of fabric and folded it however short I wanted it. I love this because I can customize the length every time I put this on. So I could choose my length, then I wrapped it around myself, and on the back, I tuck it into my bralette or bra, whichever one you're wearing. This looks super sloppy because I did it without a mirror, so I did the same process again, but this time with a mirror, and it came out a lot better. Also, if you see some dark marks on my back and legs, it's because mosquitoes left feasting on my skin, and they never tend to leave me alone every summer. Anyways, the next look you can do with this tube top is by wrapping the fabric in front of you, like this, which creates a sweetheart neckline. This looks better without the bralette, so off we go. Again, I'm struggling because no mirror, but this is how it looks when I have a mirror to assist me. I love this look as well. It's very much a summer top, and if you're worried about it coming undone, I find it if you put on a fitted bra or bralette, then it won't go loose or lose its grip. If you want extra precaution, you can always safety pin the sides of the fabric. Now we got the ruched top, and I love this simple and girly look to it and I originally made the belt specifically for this look, so when I put them together, it would be a cute matching piece. This is how they look together, and I love how it turned out. You can also use the belt as a matching headband or tie it to your bag. You can put it anywhere, really, to match it well with your outfit. It's time to bring out the skirt. So this is what I meant when using the two slits at the top and tying it together. That way, with the two slits, you can make it as tight as you want without adding a belt. And this is the finished product of the skirt. You can match the skirt with any of the tops shown, but what I love to do with the ruched top is bring the skirt up the bra line, then use the belt to fasten it some more, which would create this dress look. I thought making the top a sweetheart neckline would be better for this look, so I got safety pin and folded the center of my shirt a bit and safety pinned it together, creating this neckline. This is one of my favorite looks and shows that you can dress it up or dress down any of the pieces. If you prefer the tube top, this is how it looked paired with the skirt. Looks like a mini dress when the shirt is tucked in and all you have to do is scoot the skirt a bit lower to make a two piece instead. Or you can change up the shirt once more and wrap it on the front. This look is something I'd wear on vacation. This really makes me feel like I'm in the summer. And to dress it up, you just gotta scoot up the skirt, add the matching belt, and boom, you could get yet another dress. Now this last look is my personal favorite because I just love the straps too much. I feel like this look can be dressed down to wear every day and all I gotta do is put some white shoes and an anklet, which is what I would definitely do. I love it as a two-piece just as much, so I have no idea which look I like the best. They all are similar yet so different from one another, which is what I love because you can always customize to your liking. Comment down below which look is your favorite because I would seriously love to know. And to be honest, I need your help deciding which one is truly the best look. Thank you so much for watching and giving me a chance by even clicking on this video. I appreciate it immensely and I genuinely hope you found this helpful. See you in my next video. Whoa.